Season 2 of The Sopranos has been and went and we're here to rank every single character, all 32 of them. And you ever missing a few of them? So it, right? J just when we think we've got season 2 of The Sopranos over, the pull is back. As Silvio would say, could he make the top 10? He but, might scrape it. As Silvio would say, it's probably the only good thing Silvio has ever said. Don't no. worry, the guy like... But he kind of does annoy me, the fact that he's like Tony's number one guy and... He's on the bus. He, he doesn't really do anything, plus when you see him walking, he walks like he's deformed, like, or crippled or something. I don't know if he actually has... He walks like he shot himself. ...body deformity or whatever I don't, it is, I don't but, think uh, it would be a problem if he went to wait to... Like, see when you see that, see when you see the scene where him and... Him, uh, it's him, Tony and Polly, and they're walking onto the boat, it's like... It's just fucking weird looking, but anyway... Silvio's alright, he's got my respect. Right, talking of weird looking, 32nd place, we have got Livia. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the only way she's going to get off the bottom of our list is when she dies, so... Well, she dies yeah. next season, mate. Well, happy days. The actor's died, though. You know what? I, oh. I think she'll still be last, I don't see how she could be first. No, I, ju I just meant when she's no longer... I didn't mean first, I meant how could she not be last? No, I meant when she's no longer on the show. I won't put her last because she's not there. Who do you see potentially that could... Uh, who could be the replacement? Uh, who could be Livia 2.0? Oh, know, Carmella's beginning to get on my tits, like... Potentially. Um, no, I just don't like when people choose that life and then they act as if, oh, I didn't get into this. It's like, no, that's exactly what get, you did get into. And that's exactly... I mean, I think that same applies to Livia, but you know what? She's a fucking cunt. Her grandchildren visit her and she makes it all about her. Yeah. It's, oh, I just... I hate Livia. You know what? I'm fucking glad... Because you know what? See if you, the, you, you're a liar! See if, see if the actress didn't die. Fuck knows how long we would have got her. Yeah. Honestly, like, it, it could have been terrifying. Uh, we're moving on, though. She's the worst cat. I'd honestly say she's one of the worst characters in TV history. <laughs> I thought you were about to say she's the worst capo. It's like, fucking better not be no, a would you, would you not agree she's one of the worst characters nah, in TV history? Guy. I'm talking about people who've got nuclear heat. Obviously, she's not, like, the worst, like, written. Well, maybe she could argue she is the worst written. But I Tony! That's Carmella. Anyway, let's move on. Why couldn't she have said something to Janice and then Janice could have fucking dropped her instead of certain, a certain Richie Aprila? Huh? Yeah. Literally. 31st place, we've got Elliot, which is Dr. Melfi Shrink. There's nothing to say about this guy. We don't care about her when she's seeing a shrink, so why the fuck would we care about the actual shrink? Yeah, I mean... Enough in character, man. It just doesn't really work. I mean, the only reason Dr. Melfi's in this show is to serve Tony, is to be his psychiatrist. We don't really give a shit about Dr. Melfi when it's outside of her relationship with Tony. Therefore, we don't really care about what she's doing. And if she's seen a psychiatrist, that doesn't mean anything to us. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that he's necessarily bad. It's just we literally don't care. We don't give a shit. Exactly. Coming in 30th place, we've got Philly Spoons. This guy got picked up at the airport. I oh, know he didn't get he, he picked. He picked Gigi. He made the pick up. He made the pick up. Get took down a side street, then get shot twice. The second shot was completely unnecessary. Just like the character, because what the fuck was the purpose of this guy? You Nothing. Could, you could argue a lot of things in Sopranos is a bit unnecessary, though, to be fair. Literally. 29th place, we have got Fito. Big fat Fito. He appears in season one as a completely different character. Season two, he's one of the builders that's supposed to build Beansy, a ramp. But does he ever build Beansy, the ramp? I can't accept that, Luke. I can accept a TV show having a character and maybe the actor dies or the actor decides he doesn't want to do it anymore and they're forced with no choice but to get somebody different in to play him but to get to reprise an actual actor in a different role in the same series is cheap as fuck to me it is cheap cheap as chips cheap as cheap cheap as a nine to five isn't it ah it's very cheap and we all know nine to five sucks so that's why he's low down for me as soon as i found out he had two characters in the show i was like nah you've got to go Exactly. 28th place, we've got Raymond Curto. This guy barely appeared, and he's a capo. You don't even know who he is. Yeah, I don't, don't know how he made it this high, to be fair. Well, I felt the fact that he was a capo, he must have a little bit of, you know, someone must trust him. So, if Tony's got <laughs> a bit of trust in him... not the fucking writer. <laughs> no. But if Tony can trust him, then I'll trust him a wee bit. Fair enough. 27th place, we've got Rosalie April, Jackie April's wife. Carmella's, better nothing character, yeah, I mean, just Carmella's body, but we yeah. barely see her, man. Yeah, well, again. Just there a day about shopping. That's it. And she gets pretty high on this list, considering that's all she's there for. Yeah. Up next, with Barbara Soprano. Tony's y the youngest sister, the youngest sibling of the Sopranos. I mean, she, she seems to have, like, a, a weird thing for only... I think I'm right in saying this, but she's only appeared in the finales. No, she appeared in the finale in the premiere of season two. She hasn't watched yours in season one. At all? No. 
All right, well, she's a big name player because she only appears in the important episodes, but she's not important enough to get in the top 20 for us. So there you she's go. She's not needed. I don't. What was the point of like writing this character? I feel like if you're going to have Tony have like a sibling, Janice is perfect for that role because she's actually in the show. I'm not saying he can't have more than two siblings, but I just don't see the point of this one turning up for like two minutes at a time. It yeah. just feels a bit unnecessary. No, Maybe I've... it's just so Tony can rant about the rest of his family to someone who's not Janice, but I don't know. I don't think she adds much. It's like, I'm not saying Janice is the greatest character, but it's like, she had she played a big, big role in The Sopranos, whereas this character's had absolutely nothing. It's like, if, she, if you're going to give her nothing, then what's the point of having her? Exactly. Uh, 25th place, we've got Angie Bomponcero, Big Sal's wife. You know what? Got actually a, bit, a decent bit of screen time, I'd say, around the halfway point with Big Sal. But then see, after that... Miserable relationship. Yeah, but after that, nothing. Like, yeah. Literally got a lot of screen time. And then nothing. Nothing really else to say, like. And we didn't get to see her, well, I suppose it's still early, but from a season two standpoint, we didn't get to see her react to a certain death, so that's a little bit annoying. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll potentially see that in season three. If they ever find out about Big Sal's death, who knows? Sleeping with the fishies. Coming out 24th Tony. place, we have got Arina, 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 the Russian whore Tony sleeps with. Again, Tony. A, another character that's got I'll a lot... I'll be nothing without you. I know, like, the role on the... Uh, Tony! Like, Don't like, leave me, Tony. It's like a role on the Y, but you can't I need get, you this, man. I need you, man, in you, my you, life. You can't even get a role on the Y, and she delivers the role on the Y. Just like Tony's fat fucking roles. Tony! Tony, Tony, Tony. You know what? Why is this character getting... I mean, I would actually go as far as saying Arena got more screen time than fucking Silvio. Probably. Is there, really, is there really anything? I mean, this guy... Surely this character should only really appear when Tony's sleeping with her, like... I mean, am I wrong? Yeah, like, if she wants to kill herself or day modeling, why should Tony kill? He just got another one. Like... <laughs> like, you almost get the feeling that Tony cares about her more than fucking Carmella sometimes. Which Carmella pointed out to Tony, like, and, you know what, I think it's a valid point. I thought you were going to say his kids, but, I mean, probably both of them would be, fair enough, like... No, li literally. Uh, 23rd place, we have got Johnny Sack. You know, he's a, he's a key player in New York, but... Who? <laughs> exactly. Who? <laughs> but you know what? He's got a big role in seasons to come, so I feel like, for that reason alone, he deserves 23rd place. Well, this is a warm-up. We're getting him ready for future seasons. <laughs> 22nd place, we've got AJ. Another guy who... Well, I'll say another guy. He's like 12 years old, but, right. He gets screen time, then he disappears for like four episodes. Right? Some funny he took some weird phase this season. I don't know what it was. One minute, it's like, God's not real, and then... I don't know. It is real, but my shite bag. It was just very, very weird. It's like, like he, one minute he's God's not real. He's like a Satan worshiper. And then the next minute he's like afraid of fucking one like wee midget spiders. Like, what's it going to be? Surely, if you don't believe in the if you believe in the big de devil doing the stairs, you, you can't really be afraid of spiders. Then he randomly just started crashing cars and stuff. It was almost like here we need to have we need to have him. Weed. Yeah, let's just have him act up here just so Tony can have something to react to. Literally. Uh, 21st place, we have got Jackie April Jr. Only introduced in the last couple of episodes, but he is the nephew of Richie. And you know what? He only appeared a few times, but you feel like there's a future with this guy. Richie's seen this guy. He's like, why could my son be like him? And is he like, could he be a potential heir to the throne of Jackie April? Because he has his son. He's got his name. I mean, me. Oh, is this nephew, you said? Aye, Richie's nephew, but it's Jackie's son. Oh, Jackie April. All right, okay. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have seen this guy... In the show more with um, Richie April. I feel like maybe Richie April, instead of going to Junior, maybe could have went to his wee nephew and says... Well, he, he went with Junior with his wee nephew. <laughs> well, Junior yeah. didn't even fucking acknowledge I, him. I know, but you get my point. Who's that, who's that speaking? Um, how, Bill, how, how little must you feel when someone speaks like you? Know, I don't know. I suppose Junior's kind of earned that over the years. No, the guy was alright. Like, he's certainly better than uh, Richie's son, that's for sure. That's for sure. There's no you on this list. He's on the... He's on the... Uh, Sex offenders list. Oh, aye, something like that. 20th place, we've got Agent Skip. Literally only seen in scenes with Big Sal, but you know what? I enjoyed him. He had a lisp. He had something. Come on, Sal. I, no, I, I like Skip. Come on, Sal. You, you're not, you're not a you got to do this, Sal. You're not a police detective, Sal. you got to do this. you gotta, you got to get more on top. Come on, Sal. You, come on. you got to wear the wires, Sal. Sound like Bell's Town to me, but <laughs> if you know, you know. That's not very nice, Sean. We're not quite at Sean yet, because up next we've got Hesh, that old Jew. He didn't actually do anything in season two. God, yeah. He was a lot better in season one. I don't know how he's got this high up, to be fair. I wouldn't have put him on I feel like skip. he survived the Holocaust, right? I feel like 19th place is all right. So you're saying that's as low as he can go? I think he could have went lower, but 
I feel like it's season one legacy warranted them like 19 All right, points. let's put it this way. See, if he died in the Holocaust, where would you rank them in this list? Like, when they on the fucking list. Damn. Anyway, let's move on to 18. That's, that's uh, an alphabet of Holocaust. Sean, one, one half of uh, Christopher Stooges. I am. Um, this is this... This is the one. You know what? Get, this I, is the one Christopher kills because he couldn't get his seatbelt off. I mean, I didn't. I didn't mind those two, but after that shootout, they, they should have been down with Olivia, in my opinion. But uh, Olivia, Olivia, not Olivia. 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 Well, anyway, seventeenth place we get Matt. He, he lasted a bit longer than Sean, but I feel like at the two, he was the one that was the most cardous. Yeah, I mean, plus his last drink was out a diet fucking Fanta, which Tony ripped the piss out of him for. So fair play. Sixteenth place we have got Carmela Soprano, and you know what? There was times in this season she showed up to Tony and you actually like, well, you know what, fair play. And then he buys her like a coat and she just fucking sells out again. No fucking morals. No. Honestly. Like, you'd be led to believe that like Carmela Soprano is this like strong female character, right? But she just fucking jobs out over a jacket. The jacket. The jacket. Do you not feel like that though? I feel like if you're, if you're going to write someone to be something, you Look just at to- I mean, t- Tony and Carmela are just not compatible. Carmela gets a jacket and she literally... Drops everything and thinks Tony's the best person ever. I would actually argue... Tony gets a jacket off Richie and he doesn't give a shit, he gives it away. I would actually argue Arena has more fucking morals than Carmella. Because when Tony's giving her money, she like refuses it. It's like, no, nah, Tony, I don't want that. Tony. Tony. I want you, not your money. So maybe, maybe she deserves above Carmella, man, I'm not too sure. Up next, 15th place. Don't know how he's this high, but we've got Bobby Jr. The big fat Bobby, he helps Jr. get his fucking... Um, meals, but you know what? I like Bobby. Uh, junior's right hand man. Aye, big fat, but he's good, right? He, he ups his game in later. Tell season. you what, a lot of people in the Sopranos are fat. Oh, they are. It's the Italian culture, all that food, all that yeah. mean cuisine. All that fucking pasta and carbs. <laughs> you gotta love it. Anyway, up next, we've got a few people that aren't fat. Adriana. Not much fat on Adriana, but she gets 14th place. You know what? Is that, is that high? Or is that low? Or what? I think that's about where Adriana goes. Like, <laughs> I feel like she's a decent character. Kind of like a. Poundland Carmella in the sense of she'll just follow Christopher to the death but doesn't really actually step up to him. Oh, I don't know. I like Adrian. I think she's better than Carmella. No, she is better than Carmella, she... but she doesn't get as much screen time. She's like a younger first than Carmella. No, I think her and Christopher... She is a bit dumb. I, I think her and Christopher butt heads quite a lot. Aye, they do, but I mean, again, he whips out the ring and she kind of just drops everything like Carmella did. Yeah, well, that's true, I guess. You know what? A decent character, though. Fair play. Unlucky 13... We have got Meadow Soprano. I just feel like she's she ha, she she is like Tony. I feel like AJ. I don't know who AJ is more like. He's kind of like Tony, but retarded. I feel like Meadow is more like the level head in this side of Tony. She's like her own person, and I actually think, has morals. I think she was better. Is season, educated. I think she was better in season one. No, she was better in season one, undeniable. But I think but. she's got a higher rank here in season two. No, she no. What did you what did we rank on season one then? I think she was near I think she was close. I think she was closer to the top ten than thirteenth. I don't think she was. Actually, but we'll see. Uh, I'm pretty sure she didn't make top twenty. Top twenty? Uh, Fucking hell. I think we did her rank there. I think so as well. Well I did say it at the time. I'm pretty sure you put her below, below Carmela. Maybe Carmela was a top ten player back then. No. Right, Dr. Melfi, twelfth place. I think Dr. Melfi's gonna be high because there's just so many scenes with her and Tony. And when you're only getting the rub off Tony and the few rubs off Ellie and also your not a lot family else to, that doesn't not, really care about There's not a lot else to drag you down. Exactly. But it's almost like like probably 80% of the scenes that you see Dr. Melfi and she's sharing the screen with Tony. Yeah, and that's a lot. That's a lot percentage-wise. Fact on that. And coming in 11th place, we've got the highest ranked woman. Who do you think it is? Janice April. No, I just, they didn't get married though. Mm-hmm. They don't marry just, it was Jan, it's still Janice Soprano. Um, you know what? Decent character, only introduced this, I believe, was it this season? Or was it the end of season one? It might, been, it might have been the finale of season one she got brought into it. But you know what? A decent character, Janice Soprano is. Um, I wouldn't say anything particularly special, but I feel like it's a bit of a psycho- psychotic woman that ain't booked, overbooked like a feminazi. Even yeah. though she's a bit weird. Basically the female version of Tony as we go in to the top 10. The underboss gets in under the top 10 because he came in at 10th. And it just wasn't a very good season for Silvio, if I'm being honest. We had the funny scene at the poker game. He was privy to Big Sal's death. Um, he did the Godfather impression probably about four times. And that's really all I've got to say about the guy. 
Yeah, it doesn't really do much. I, I literally feel like you go two or three episodes at a time without even seeing Silvio. And there's and even if you see him, maybe it's some relevance just not happening. A lot of times he's just in the background standing there, not actually doing anything. No, yeah, literally. And he's I w- the underboss. And I want to like him because I think he does have a pretty unique look. But, I mean, I can't really no, rate him any higher than see this. See the underboss, right? They're supposed to, like, guide the top man. When have you ever got the sense of that, like... If anything, I think you'd assume Polly's the underboss. Yeah, I know, but, like, when do you even get, like, a scene? Like, when Tony tells him about Richie, he does go, I think everybody will be all right with him going away, T. That's it. Like, you never get the this, this sense of, like, that Silvio's, like, pulling the strings behind the Tony machine, do you? No, definitely not. And, like I say, that I feel like... Yeah, uh, Polly feels more like the underboss, in my opinion. No, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Uh, we're moving into ninth place, so when this guy can cook a serious cuisine, we have got Artie Bucco again. He Although wasn't... he did get blamed for giving uh, <laughs> Tony food poisoning, so... He did, but he wasn't in season two a lot, wasn't he not? No, he wasn't, definitely in season one a lot more. Yeah, and you know what? I, I would go. I think when Artie appears, it's golden. I feel like it's just ga- it's guaranteed comedy, especially in with Tony. Like I just feel like yeah. I mean, there were some good scenes with Tony in this season with whole food poison, also with David Scatino when they were like, "Oh, remember we were friends back at fuck off, Davey. No one cares what you think, man." Uh, but yeah, Big Artie was good. Coming in at eighth place, the apparent supposedly should be underboss Polly Galtieri. I like Polly, although I didn't really like him in the attack. Well, actually, I don't know what to say. I like him. That maybe a bit. First, yeah, but you can't like the eighth guy in the list for who are you like? He's, he's definitely out there. He feels special. He feels like, I don't know, he just doesn't feel like he's he, all there. He seems a bit wacky, doesn't he? He does, especially in that Italy episode. I feel like Silvio's wackiness seems forced. I feel like Polly just seems like his personality. Yeah. Uh, seventh place, we've got D- David Scatino, played by Robert Patrick. Only appeared in three episodes. Will never be seen again, but I think he left a pretty good... I'll tell you what, it felt like more than three episodes. I'll give him a lot of credit. Yeah. I felt like he made a lot more appearances You can see the that. difference in his acting between like him and Silvio. Yeah. Absolutely. No, well, this is what you get when you get good actors on a show. You know, they create good moments, memorable moments, and they make characters feel special. And, you know, this guy has done more with his character in three episodes than, you know, a lot of the main cast. Have done sopran- in two seasons. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, but that's got to be down to Robert Patrick. Of course, you know, the direction as well of the character helps, but you got to feel like the actor plays a big role in that too. Exactly. Coming in sixth place though, we have got Uncle Junior. A character that probably warrants more than sixth place when you look at it, but didn't really do a lot. I mean, he got out of jail and he's literally confined to a hospital room or his shit-looking house. Yeah, it was pretty much a house arrest season for Junior. Definitely not as good as it was in season one for him, but I feel like he's kind of just lucky to be alive and Tony seemed to be a little bit forgiven. It looks like they're pretty much squashed the beef. That they had. Yeah, the beef Tony's is... been the bigger man. Didn't have to do that. He's always the bigger man, mate. He's pretty big. Raven's getting pretty loud as well. But like, yeah, I like him. He's good. You know what? See when he appears on screen, you, you sit up and listen. You do. Because it was some funny stuff. Coming in fifth place, the guy for Italy. It's Furio. And again, I feel like he's got that thing I just said about Junior. I feel like when he's on screen, there's always something happening. He's got that... He's just, he's different. You know what, see the fact he's actually, like, a fully bred Italian? None of this watered-down uh, poly, poly pish where, like, you know, he's, he's he's out looking for the respect of his fellow Italians. Like, Furio just warrants respect. He gets respect. And that's why he's in the top five. Coming in at number four, we've got Junkie Chris. A weaker season compared to season one. But again, he seems to be the only guy, maybe outside of Tony, but even there, I don't think Tony gets this. I feel like he gets all like the fun stuff, like the movie business stuff, the music stuff, anything they want to dive into. Like we and side it, missions or side quests, that he, he seems to play a role in it, have some sort of part. Yeah, I mean, and he did get shot. I mean, it was, I mean, it's a big character getting shot, but I mean, the shootout was pretty poor, but at the end of the day, it's still a shootout, so I mean, I'll give it that. And then, but you know what? I feel like he was good for the first half up until about episode 9 when he was in his uh, in hospital. But see, after that, he did nothing. Yep. Went missing for the final four episodes, man. Poor writing. Into our podium positions, guys. We have got Richie April. Got introduced in episode 3. He comes in at third place. Leaves us in the episode 12 of season 2. I feel like there was more on the table. Yeah, I don't think the guy should have died. Or if he, if he had to die in season two, if he was a one-season character, 
I, I feel like the rivalry between him and Tony should have been sped up. I feel like it should have escalated quicker. And I feel like it should have ended with actually April and Soprano, not... Well, technically it was April first of Soprano, it just wasn't the correct Soprano. It was, at least it wasn't Barbara, though. Yeah, at least it wasn't Barbara, but... No, for me, I did enjoy it, but it, it feels like they pulled the plug on this guy way too quickly. Um, I don't think he should have died at the kitchen table waiting on his dinner. I feel like there was definitely something Mark good. Janice, I'm in no fucking mood today. It's all about the dinner, Janice. And, uh, but yeah, pretty much Janice saying that it doesn't matter if his son's gay. That kind of pushed him over the edge. Uh, he responded with a punch to the jaw, and then Janice responded with two rounds in the chest. And that was it. Good night for Richie April. Pretty much, folks. And then, second place. Can Tony be over top? No. This guy may be bigger than Tony, but he couldn't overtop him. It is a Big Sal. You know what? I actually genuinely felt sorry for Sal this season. Heading into season two, I didn't really feel anything for Tony's crew. The only one I really liked, to be fair, was Christopher. But I think the longer season two goes on, the, the more we get with, obviously, Big Sal being an informant and... You see the guilt with him having to give information, having to be the rat, so to speak, on Tony. It's like he doesn't want to do it, but he kind of has to do it or else he's going to go along away for a very, very long time. And then we get the death and, you know, it's kind of sad, at least from a... Let's let's be fair, though. We we say he has to do it. He could just do the time. I know 30 years, it probably puts him up in debut. He's, He's about 80, but fuck's sake, man. A real man would do the time. If he can't do the time, don't do the crime. And his arse went when he got threatened with police time and he ran it on his crew. I mean, it's all right people say, not like, but wait until you're facing 30 years, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm not a criminal, mate. No, I know, but like, uh, uh, do we know that Sylvia and Polly wouldn't do the same thing if they were getting 30 years jammed up? Though? No, but, no, I, well, well I, I get your point. Well, Polly's actor only agreed to do the show of his character was never made to be a rat. There you go. Because ca- is that, is that, the actor was actually in the, ma- the mafia. The mm. real mafia, none of this pretend pish. But I think it just, I think across every TV show, I feel like once a character's a rat, it almost just demeanors them, doesn't it? Yeah, you it, can't come back to being a rat. And the, as good as a character is, like, y- y- it, it takes away, you can't look at them as the same character, I'm sorry, you can't. Once a rat, always a rat. And I, I can't think of a character, though, in a TV show that I think, oh, they were, they were unreal, despite being a rat. No. And, uh, he did get second. Well, look three. at mine's MC. Half the club's rats, and they fucking suck, so, I mean... That's it. Coming out at number one, we've got Tony Soprano. And who else was it going to be? Do this you th- think he'll ever th- be eclipsed? No, that's number one spot's reserved for Tony. You may as well just not even do number one and just announce that he's going to be number one over the next six seasons. Boom. Simple as that. Who do you think could beat him? That's currently on the show. Aye. I think anyone that could have beat him is dead. Oh, there you go. So, I, off the top of my head, I genuinely think that this season was probably the only chance for him to get beat, and that was with Richie April. And he could only make third place. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Tony coming at number one. That is us ranking all the Soprano characters for season two. We will begin the review soon for season three, but we've got a couple more feds for season two to come out, so make sure you stay tuned for them. And uh, yeah, we will catch you in the... Which are they? What, what are they, mate? Ranking all the deaths. Everything's been ranked, that's wow, it. Wow, okay, well. <laughs> I've even did the then and now. Jesus Christ, this guy's on it, guys. All right, season three reviews coming soon. Oh, yeah, baby.